Hello everyone and thanks for coming to our special webinar tonight. Um, we will be looking at the trends of 2023 in the Forex market briefly and also what we can expect next year in uh, 2024. Now, 2023, you know, from a, from a Forex trader's point of view, like it really was um, based on the yields and the expectations of what central banks going to do. And that's been uh, pretty much the narrative since since the end of the pandemic, end of the pandemic, where the banks, central banks, cut, then they're hiking, and now they're looking like they've peaked and they're going to start cutting again. So it's it's this um, attempt to front run what the central bank's going to do, what they actually do, what bond yields do. Um, but to go through all this, we've got a very special guest, uh, Evan Lucas, who I don't know anyone better in the macro space to explain all this and hopefully give you an idea of trying to get on the right side of the market for 20. 24. Um, we're looking maybe will it be a mirror image? We've had the hikes this year, next year it looks like it's going to be the cut. So, um, without further ado, Evan, I'll let you go. If you look, can you read the risk disclaimer too, Matt? I don't actually have any in front yeah, of me. No, you can, guys. Thank you as always for having me on. I, I love doing these, it's the perfect time to be doing this. I hope you can understand my uh, title slide there with the mirror image of 2023 to 2024. I was thinking I was being a bit too clever for that, but let's move on from that because that's not what we're here to talk about or me with my stupid sort of positioning. So as Lockie says, don't forget, please have a very good read through of the disclaimer on screen. Everything in this webinar tonight between Lockie and myself is our own personal views, go markets, go market securities and go market analysts. Don't know your personal experience or your personal financial goals. Therefore, none of tonight should be lied as evil advice at all. It is just generally in nature only, and uh, all the T's and C's are in front of you. So, let's actually. I will, I will just say, if anyone has any questions, please throw them in as well. I'll do my best to uh, pass them along. Yeah. yeah, and that's what I was about to sort of go on to. So, don't forget, over in your um, go to webinar control panel, drop in the questions. Both Lockie and I can see them. I'd much rather sit here and talk to you from questions rather than me just talking at you. It's much more interactive and hopefully it means that I don't sound like a drone because I know I can talk very fast and very quickly for a long, long time and that gets into people's ears. So please, if you've got a question, get involved. We'd love to have you there. I know there's going to be heaps of questions on FX. I am prepared for your gold questions, um, even though it's one of the banes of my existence. So I am fully ready for you on that. But before we go any further, let's talk about this year. And the year has been, and I remember sitting here, I think this time last year, like you and I did something similar uh, yeah. about, you know, what was 2023 going to look like? And I remember at the time I was pretty strong on the view that this year would be like last, the year before that, most money going towards the USD. And this chart tells me relatively well that I was pretty, pretty right. Uh, with most of them. Um, now, you look at, and I know this is a messy chart, I'll let you know straight away that the CAD and the yen are inverted. So obviously normally you do dollar, dollar yen and dollar CAD. Um, that has been inverted just so you can see that the trend has all been one way, which is that currencies in the main against the US dollar have declined over the year. So that's why it is a little bit weird and you'll probably see that, the, yeah, CAD and, and yen is the wrong way around. But overall, it has been the year of the US dollar. And that's not surprising. It's changing. And I do also think you can see very clearly on the, the right hand side that since the bottom in the end of October, and when the US Federal Reserve started to change its rhetoric and started to change its view around inflation, its view around the overall US economy, whether or not it's done enough now to really squash inflation, that change has basically transferred into what I think will be the mirror image of 2023, which is that it will be the year not of the US dollar and probably of everything else. And that's already starting to take shape. So that's that's what I want to talk about a lot tonight. Now, the other thing I'm going to say very strongly on this as well is that you are more than welcome to disagree with me. And I, I actually welcome if you do, because as we all know in FX, opinions are great. Theories are great, technicals are great, until they're not. And I think that also is, is why FX is such an exciting thing to be involved with is because you've got to be nimble. You've got to be humble is also part of it. So my thesis and what I've stuck to works most of the time, but not always. And it's not an exact scenario. The correlations I'm about to show you are not exact, but they are very, very good indicators. 
And that is, and what we're going to go through, is the differentials between particularly 10-year bonds of differing currency pairs of different nations or groups. So 2023, let's now, what I've done here is actually show you forward the US 10-year less the US, sorry, the, the Euro 10-year less the Euro, US 10-year versus the Euro. And you can see that it's the spikes and movements are pretty similar. This isn't the tightest one. I want to let you know that very clearly. This is actually one of the widest differentials out there, but it does give you a bit of an understanding. You've also got a few sort of issues in there. So you can see very clearly that, you know, looking through July and the spike that we saw in there, there was issues in the Eurozone that they were possibly going to hike rates to the highest level they've seen in the Eurozone's history as a collective group. And that really shot, absolutely shot the Euro through the roof and put it back to a level that we hadn't seen since about 2021 when it got above 112. But since then, you can see that it's basically followed quite closely the fact that the euro is, you know, about two percentage points below the US dollar, ten, the US 10 year. And this differential has played quite well. And as you can see, although the currency movements tend to be stronger and harder, the lead is the difference. The lead is the difference between the 10 years. And, and that therefore gives you that understanding that every time the 10 year moves down, you know, you're going to see the currency move down. If every time the 10 year moves up, the currency tends to move up with it. And it's it's simple forex economics in terms of what I'm explaining to you here, because don't forget when we always talk about currencies, we do sometimes overlook the idea that euro dollar is just a ratio between the European currency and the U.S. currency, and it is people selling the euro to buy the U.S. to get some form of return in the U.S. That's why they're doing it in the physical currency. They're actually sending money to the U.S. to invest. And most of the time, you're investing in the US 10 year if you're a big investment bank or some form of big fund to obviously return the kind of numbers that they've had. And, and with the US 10 year that's been between four and a half and even as high as 5.6%, that's a really attractive yield to be chasing. And that's what has happened. That is what 2023 has been about. What is technically seen as the safest asset on the planet in the US 10 year bond has been giving you in above inflation returns for no risk. So if you're a pension fund, why would you not do that? And that's what this year has been about. And that's why I've been pretty strong on following these. So here's the Aussie and the Australia, you know, Australia versus the US has always been one to watch very closely because nine times out of 10, the, the Aussie US 10 year differential always tends to trade positively in the Australia's favour because we're a bit more of a risk market. We have to pay a bit more of a risk. There's, you know, we don't have the economy that the US does, all those kinds of things. And so historically, we tend to have a positive 10-10 differential, but that hasn't been the case, you know, probably now for 18 months, which is something you never really see, but it has been an incredible lead, particularly for Aussie dollar. And the correlation here is much tighter, as you can see. The charts actually are very, very close. And again, what I'd probably allude to here is that the 1010 is actually the lead here. So you can see that the green line and the moves that are happening in the green line tend to be just slightly ahead of what's going in the currency, uh, in the pair, sorry. And that's because, again, the money is chasing the yield difference and the money is chasing that better opportunity. And all the way through this year, when you know the US was particularly moving on the idea that you know, it could even get to as high as, you know, 5.5 to 5.75% on the US Federal Reserve. And the Aussie, you know, we were hiking rates from the RBA, but then we plateaued through sort of that July period before, you know, M uh, Michelle Bullock took over and hiked rates last month. That, you can see, was part of the reason why the Aussie, you know, plummeted back out of 70 cents and went straight back down into the mid to low 60s. Oops. Um, and that, that I think should be something to be really, you know, really aware of in terms of, of how this is going, because this is the closest I've seen the 1010 Aussie US trade in a long time. And part of the other reason, I, I know I'm going to get questions on this as well, is that the China story has been put to the back burner. The China sluggish economy, the fact that although we've still got a reasonable current account surplus, 
overall, the China story has not really been the play in the currency this year. And it needs to be pointed out. It just hasn't been the play. It has been this. Uh, on the idea of, of where rates, what do you get in terms of you know, above inflation return and, and therefore where should I put my currency? And as I said, once the RBA stopped raising, uh, raising rates in the middle of the year, you can see what happened and, and away it went and the differential got right out very, very quickly. Finally, it's the same in the UK. Um, again, there has been you know, a bit of a difference with what happened in November and you can see that it's broken down. But overall, it's pretty close. Um, and, and it again tells you that there is certainly something to be had here with regards to how this works. And for me and my perspective, this has been the way to look at this year. And so my question that I'm asking you is, does this apply and should this still apply into 2024? Because if this is what we had this year, what was the other reasoning for it and how did it happen and do and can we translate what has been quite you know strong fundamentals this year into you know what we can expect and what we should be looking for in, in 2024. So we know about inflation um, and we know particularly that what has changed at the back end of this year with all of this movement around this bottom, I hope you can see my cursor with what happened in November, is the very, very sharp, incredibly quick declines that are going on in US inflation. US inflation now has gone basically down 10 percentage points inside 11 months, which is exactly what you want to see. It's a very positive, positive movement in their overall management of what's going on. However, you can still see a reasonable way away from you know, their 2% mandate into where it sits. Although services inflation is clearly coming down, it's still above five, as that chart shows you. And the US, like us, are a service-based economy. So it's still, you know, there are still reasons to believe, particularly those of you on the hawkish side of the world that think that rates in the US will probably remain on hold longer than the market is forecasting. And some of the forecasts of up to three rate cuts in 2024 might be overdone. But that's the positioning and there's no argument about that's the positioning. That's also the base case of what most people are now moving towards and I'll come to what that's done with regards to bond yields and where that means. But overall it's because they believe that by the, this time next year and when I do this talk for 2025, the expectation is that the US will be a completely different kettle of fish to now and that inflation should probably have returned to target and that they are now looking to expand into 2025 and 2026. Then look at the Eurozone and it too has had an incredible turnaround, but still not where they want it to be, but it is much sharper and much faster. It needs to also be explained that please remember the Eurozone was hit harder, stronger and longer than most of the world with the COVID issues of 2020. Then the issues around Russia and its war in Ukraine, also around oil and the supply of oil. Um, all of those things have certainly been a pretty reasonable problem for them. And it explains why goods particularly spiked above 15% uh, at midway point last year. But they are getting back and they are getting back quite well. It's also you know, phenomenal to be sitting here saying that the ECB has an interest rate of 4.5%. This is a group that for near enough to 10 years had 0.1 of 1% and most of their deposit rates were negative, basically trying to force banks to put money back into their overall zone and couldn't stimulate their market at all. Now they've, they've got interest rates they basically never thought would happen, but they're falling. But again, the difference between the Eurozone and the US is pretty stark. The US is managing their position probably slightly better they're also in a much better footing for, for you know, moving on the economic growth that's going to come from, from rate cuts that might come next year and the year after. So we'll talk about euro dollar in the future. Same with the UK. The UK went through the same things. The difference is that they are a much larger service economy than the European Union. And you can see that there with the blacky blue line that service inflation is only just starting to turn. And despite the ECB absolutely clamping the screws down as hard as they can to try and rein in rampant inflation in the UK and a cost of living crisis 
that none of them can probably remember since the 60s. They are a bit further off. There is no doubt that cable has been reflecting that and it's much more volatile than, than the euro. It's probably even more volatile than the Aussie at the moment too, off the back of that fact the UK economy is there. So for those of you that are interested in cable and are getting a little bit, you know, want a bit of excitement in your life, next year the UK and the US differential and the way that their economies work, et cetera, I think will be fascinating. And then it's us and we are the laggard. And it needs to be made very, very clear that we are massively lagging what is going on on the inflation story. I have deliberately added an extra line, which is the trim mean line, because do not forget that the RBA, their main way of looking at inflation is trim mean. So that's stripping out food, fuel, volatile items of that description out of their overall view because it distorts. And you can see that in the headline figure. But trim mean inflation, you know, only now is service inflation starting to fall. We need it to be back between three, two and 3%. And it's a country mile away. Even though the last monthly update had us at 4.9%, trim mean was still at 5.1. Services is still on the month on month figure, trading at about 5.6, 5.7%. And the last quarterly read, it had just dipped back below six. It's currently sitting at 5.89%. And we are a massive service economy. So we have a long, long way to go, which is why what I want to show you and why I'm going through all this sort of fundamental stuff is that from my perspective, the Aussie actually becomes really interesting next year. I actually have not been this interested in where the Aussie goes for a while because there's strength in it from the point of view that rates in this country will probably remain higher than most other nations for longer. That differential that I showed you at the start between the Aussie 10 year and the US 10 year is likely to go back positive pretty quickly in the early part of next year and stay there. And when it stays there, that is going to start attracting money back into the country and therefore starting to, in my view anyway, push the Aussie back towards 70, maybe even by this time next year as high as 75 cents if Michelle Bullock, as she keeps warning us, stays the path and doesn't cut rates like she's expected to. Are there any questions just before I go any further? Yeah, I just got to say I agree. I think Aussie dollars is certainly one of the undervalued ones for that reason. I think it's been beaten down by that rate differential quite a bit, which is looking like it'll turn probably Q1 next year and um, probably the, the China slowdown story a bit as well, which more than likely will improve next year as well. So I'm very bullish on Aussie dollar next year as well. Yeah, the China story is an interesting one. I'm glad you raised that, Lockie. Um, the reason I say that is it's going to come. Whether it's next year, whether it's 2025, it doesn't matter. As soon as China will you know, get its act together and start moving again, the question will be whether or not it's as hard as it has been in the past. And that, that I'm not sure on. I don't think it probably will, but it's certainly there. And so... It could be a you know a double pincer move with regards to our rates being higher and the fact that China has finally you know, got us you know got the attention it probably deserves. All of that will slowly but surely get that that dial moving. And and I've been pretty negative on the Aussie for probably the last two and a half years, and I definitely you know, I missed what I thought it was going to get to, which was 62, like the bottom end. But I definitely was on the view that, you know, those that were calling for 75 and 77 cents were like watching something that I was sitting there going, what are you watching that I don't know? Yeah. And again, I always try and ask that question. What are, what are people, why are people calling what they're calling and what are they seeing? Because when you can ask yourself that honest question, you can then, you know, make better informed decisions. And that's, and that's part of what I'm hoping this is sort of helping is I'm not necessarily saying this is right. As I said, I will point this very clearly. This is, this is mostly right, but it's not perfect. But it has given a really, really good base to understand, particularly with what's going on right now where things are volatile and we'll come, you know, Lockie and I will go through, you know, dollar yen and what's happened in the last couple of weeks and you know what's starting to transpire in, in cable because we need to. But this gives me the base. It gives you a hope and understanding about you know, what the fundamental changes have happened in 2023 and how they're likely to carry through into next year. So let's let's talk about that. And that's why I said 2024, the year of not the US dollar. So what this is, if you haven't seen this chart before or don't really sort of follow the FOMC, so the Federal Open Market Committee over in the US, which is their 
their committee from the Federal Reserve that votes on the rates positions of you know, the US band. And don't forget, they don't have a set cash target like we do, they have a band. So currently it's sitting at 5.25 to 5.5%. And as you can see from those yellow dots, that's where we're sitting, right? That's, that's, that's exactly where we're currently sitting. Sorry, 5.5 to 5.75 is where we're sitting. Um, and that's where we are. So that's, that's what the yellow dots are. That's the median view of the all members on the board. The meeting in all the other dots, so all those dots are individual members. And from the September meeting, so we unfortunately do get one coming on you know, on Thursday morning. So in a day's time, this will update. So I know it's going to be wrong, but that's okay. We will get updated versions of where these dots sit. But you can see the expectation for next year is for two rate cuts. If you look at what the median is there, some of them are even suggesting it could be as much as a full 1% down from where we currently sit. So there's two dots at the bottom there that would suggest that rates in the US by this time next year will be at 4.25 to 4.5%. And then you can see how stretched out they are in 2025. I mean, that is really hard to get any sort of gauge on and the 2026 and longer run average is just as bad. But what matters here, don't worry about the longer run average, the 2.5%, that's what they all believe it should get back to. That's what they think is the the neutral rate, the rate where basically there's not economic expansion or contraction and that inflation sitting at a fairly reasonable level, which is not surprising they're all sitting at that level. But what I want to show you here is that the orange line to the line in the green is the difference between the futures. And this is how we're going to evaluate 2024. So in September, expectations from the market were rates will probably be at around sort of 4.75 to 5% next year down to as low as sort of 4.25 and thereabouts into 25 and 26. The steepness of the decline now is rapidly picking up and you can see that the market is at the very bottom of the range expectations from the dot plots of the Fed members and it's at the, you know, it's below the median view with regards to 2025. That to me is, is why the US dollar, I personally think, is going to have a tough time next year as rates start to get cut and differentials start to go the wrong way. So to put that also into a bit of understanding, this is, it's not as good, I understand that, but this is the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures implied yield curve. You can actually look this up, right? So if you want to just type on the ASX, just type in, or even just into your Google bar, just type in 30-day interbank cash rate futures, this will pop up. You can see this every single day. It's been interesting to watch this because a week and a half ago, those blue lines for February, March, April were above the dotted line, which is the current cash rate. And since Michelle Bullock has spoken in the December meeting and over the last sort of few days, the market now believes that we're at the peak. So this is why the only catch I have around my bullishness on the Aussie dollar is that maybe it wouldn't be as, it, it could have been more bullish if the expectation was for a further one rate rise next year. The market now thinks that they're done. But as you can also see from this chart, they don't think they're going to cut rates anytime soon. In fact, they don't even fully price in a rate cut until October next year at best. At best, and only by this time next year is there going to have been one. So you can see that they believe by December 24, they think the cash rate will be at 4%. So that's one and a possibility of a slight one more considering we're at 4.35%. And those of you that are like me that may be a little bit anal, everybody in my world just talks about when are they going to start getting back to normalising the cash rate to the quarters rather than sitting on this little random extra 10 basis points. I, I don't think it actually will ever happen. I think they, they don't really care and it's just something that everybody gets to talk about. But that this is, this is the difference here in between what this is and what this is is why I'm pretty bullish on the Aussie dollar, but it's not just for that reason. So that brings me to this. This is an ugly chart. I do understand that and I am really sorry, but it's the only way I could represent what I'm trying to talk about in another way. So I've deliberately spelled out in the color scheme there of what you can see the expectations and what's happened to US yields. So particularly have a look at how steep a drop away the one year down to the five year is, and what has happened from one month 
who even you know six months ago is quite interesting that it was basically replicated and then you know three months and one month ago rapidly ramped up and is now back at the lowest it's actually been of expectations for the us yield curve of the whole entire year this is the lowest it's been so you can see the market is making big big bets big bets that rate cuts not only are they coming they're going to come hard and fast particularly over the next 18 months and that's that's how you read this that's how you can see it i mean the fact that the yield on the three month six month and to some extent the one year is so much higher than the five-year yield is is why now everybody will also talk about the, you know the inverse between the two-year and ten-year that's a discussion for another day and i get that discussion because yes the us is possibly facing a recession but overall I think you need to be fully aware that this is why next year the USD is going to be interesting as the US starts to cut. Um, then, you see, we think you'll see a, a bull steepening of that curve where the, the the short end rates drop a lot quicker than the the high end, the, the longer end rates. There, that will obviously be bearish for the US dollar, right? Yeah, correct, correct. Um, and and why what you then need to compare it to is like euro dollar um the steepness is there but not as strong so i'm not as interested in the euro next year i think it's going to get probably back and hover around 112. 112 seems to be about fair value but let's put that out there quite clearly the fair value of the euro and the average of the euro since its creation back in 2000 has been around that mark now yes there's been times where it's really ballooned right up, you know, well and truly up into the 130 stuff. And it has and had one point gone below parity, which was a fascinating thing. Um, but overall, it seems that that's the case. So I'm not that I'm not that enthralled with Euro dollar next year because I can't play this as close as I I want to because the expectation is that both sides of the Atlantic are going to follow each other quite quickly down. As they get to it um and and that's going to be something that will be watched quite closely christine lagarde i think is is absolutely you know gunning to try and take the pressure out of the euro economy because it's struggling but they still have an inflation problem as i showed you before this though however is the opposite this is the aussie and that's this is why i am of that view that the australian differentials are quite interesting to see why there is, you know, a strength that probably will come in the Aussie dollar that it hasn't seen for a little while as we move back towards a positive 10-10 differential, that the expectation of rate cuts in this country are much, much lower than what's going on overseas. And again, have a look, that blue line, that's what's going on right now. So it's it's been all over the shot, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt that we are forecasting rate cuts in this country over the next three years, but they're pretty small. They're not much that, you know, the expectation that rates will be remaining around on a cash number between sort of 3.75 and, and sort of four and a bit percent are pretty high. Uh, and that needs to be pointed out quite clearly. Like, I think sometimes we forget that when Michelle Bullock says that she expects rates to remain higher for longer, she's not kidding. And the market is finally starting to, to wake up to that. And this chart is, is the best way I've been able to see, or at least show that's what's going on um, in, in that space. And then finally, the UK. And I've just realized I haven't labeled this, but this is the UK and you can, all of the labels are the same. They're much closer because the UK at the moment is, as I said to you, it's got a, an inflation problem that's coming down, but services are a problem. The expectation is that they will, you know, start to take their foot off the throat because rates over there have been you know pretty high uh, by historical standards and gilts are starting to move in the right direction but again there's a bit of a tightness here and i find cable more exciting because the volatility and it's higher the volatility around you know the fact that euro the uk economy has got pressure the unexpected nature of what the ecb could do you can see that i mean look at what the yellow line which was going on for what was happening three months ago. Look at how up and down it is. The fact that you've got the jump up in the five year compared to the three year, that, that suggests that they expect that inflation could you know, rear its hair again and therefore rates have to go up. 
that's that's what this is telling you. In the next five years, rates may actually have to move again. And 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 even now, they're still showing you that that could still be a possibility that over the next five years, although rates will be lower than where they are now, the possibility of the ECB stepping in is, is a risk. And that's reflected in the volatility that I showed you. And I'm going to go all the way back to it. Um, going in the currency here is that that risk is there. And that's why, you know, you look at cable, it is much, much more volatile. It's much stronger and harder in its moves, both up and down, because at the moment the UK economy isn't what it once was, and it is in a much higher level of risk. And that's that's it is exciting, but just bear that in mind that you know cable does come with that level of risk that the UK at the moment is struggling to be what it once was and and it's probably also has a government that, that is a little bit more rudderless than some of the others and making rash decisions as we saw last year with Liz Truss and you know the way that it's been run over the, the last sort of five to ten years with the Johnson government and now what you know the Sunak government is doing it, it's hard to, to get around the fact that you know if you do want a bit of excitement in your life this is the one I'd look at anything else Lockie before I move on no mate no, no it's all good go for it yeah so now I want to come to questions and, and, and where I'm at because I, I think I've spoken very quickly there and I've got through a lot of information very, very fast. So my expectation and why I've come back to this chart, as ugly as I said it was at the start, is that there's a real expectation that when I show you this chart this time next year, it will have inverted. There is a real expectation, particularly for things that are starting to grow. So we know that the Aussie market's likely to be the one that sort of gets your Aussie come through. If you look at CAD, it's likely to get come through with, you know, what's going on around the stabilisation at their rates. You then look at cable and dollar yen. They are also getting interesting from, from that perspective because they're coming from very low bases. The question that probably is there is, are we actually already seeing the, what I'm sort of forecasting in 2024 has it already begun? In my view, it has. In my view, it's on. This started basically October 26, when the US Federal Reserve basically declared that they think they're on top of inflation and that rate cuts are the next things to do. And you can see that reflected here. And that's what I think will be a trend that goes very much into next year, starting off in January and going all the way through to probably June, a bit of a moderation, and then we can reassess from there. But that's why next year is, in my view, going to be a lot of fun and very exciting, but a complete inverse of what we've just done. I mean, I agree. I will say I agree with you, the euro. I think the euro is probably one of the currencies that won't outperform too hard against the US dollar. I think they've, they've got their own issues and they probably will start cutting um, probably as aggressively as the Fed uh, early next year onwards. Um, yeah, my, my, my picks next year. I think the Japanese yen, we haven't spoken about much. The the carry yeah, trade I'll, on that. I left that for I you. Think, I know that you're pet at the moment, so off you go. I love it. <laughs> it, is, it is like the, the you know pinnacle of carry trade, isn't it? I, if I just share my screen briefly, I'll um, show everyone. Okay, sorry, mate. Give me a sec. I think I might have to make myself presenter. Hang on. Yeah, yeah I'll uh... send me back to presenter and I'll just have a a quick show of how you can look up all this stuff on TradingView. Um, it just gives you, I mean, I, I think if you're trading Forex, especially the last 18 months, as you said, if, with um, since, absolutely since post-pandemic, there's just been this chase of yield differentials. Um, it's always been a big part of Forex trading. It's always been good to keep an eye on, but certainly the last year and a half since we've come out of this, since the, the cuts and then the hikes and then the market trying to guess if we've peaked and if we're going to start cutting again. Um, I'll show you dollar yen, which is so trading view, everyone can get on trading view, but if you want to bring up a currency pair, you hit this little plus sign to get these charts that Evan's got. Um, you put the first name currency in for their yield, so US 10 year minus the Japanese 10 year. You have to do a little bit of jigging, so you need to put that on the, a different scale. Um, set these to regular to make the prices a bit more and i think japanese us dollar japanese yen if you see this rate differential as well as you showed with those other ones just forex just makes so much more sense because like, you know why is it going up why is it going down it's it's purely this yield play of these differentials and 
and we saw this big dip in the yen and everyone was surprised, but really it's it's playing catch up to those yield differentials. So it's vitally important, especially recently and next year will we'll continue, I've no doubt, as, as the market's trying to front run what central banks going to do, what yields are going to do. Um, it's it's really important to keep an eye on these differentials. And, and if you're going to do technical analysis on the price, um, you can also do technical analysis on the yield differentials. If you see like a resistance level here on these yield differentials, you know that the price is probably going to have the same thing. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting year with with the expectation. That how are these central banks going to push back? Um, I've got a feeling that tomorrow night or Thursday morning, I should say, is um, I think the Fed may push back a little bit. So I'm not too bearish on the US dollar yet for this quarter. I, I think it'll be certainly from late Q1 next year once um, it's clear that the Fed has peaked and they're going to start cutting. I think there will be a little bit of pushback over the next couple of months, but um, I'm I agree. I think they, they sort of want to remind the market that it's getting ahead of itself. Um, yes. I, and, I and say that very clearly that they haven't conquered inflation yet. There's still a long way to go, blah, blah, blah. You can hear the jaw boning already, but I agree. <laughs> that come, come Thursday morning, they just probably want to give the market a bit of a tap on the head just to calm down. Um, yes, that, yes, I agree. Yes, we all know that rate cuts are likely to happen, but maybe not as hard or as soon as what the market has got forecasted. Well, absolutely. And that's that's one of the other things too. You look at these um, pairs and how the market is is forecasting these cuts and whether they, you think that central bank's gonna push back. So they're probably being um, a little bit aggressive with the Fed, maybe not aggressive enough with the, with the UK. So there's um, these, differentials really are, are going to be the driving force and, and I've no doubt the US dollar will will well I can't say that in FX you never know what's going to happen but I'm of the opinion that um, the F, the US dollar will have a, a, a bit of a bear run next year as the as the Fed was I think they were ahead of the curve on the hikes I've, I've got a pretty strong feeling they're going to be ahead of the curve on the um, on the on the cuts but um, I think the what the currencies to watch is certainly the yen um, the Aussie dollar, the yen is a big one because they haven't quite, they haven't normalised. It's still actually in a, a rate hiking mode rather than a cutting. So you can see definitely. Well, they're not really raising at all. I mean, let's be honest. The Bank of Japan has been the only bank out there to basically sit on its hands through all this period because yes, they don't have, yes. they, don't have they don't have the inflation that the rest of the world does. They but have, yeah. you're right. They have the problem of whether they they um, normalise to an extent where they raise the you know move the bands yeah. of, the, of the JGB 10 years or whatever but if we see these differentials drop because the yen has just if you we zoom out a bit like you just to see the the carnage on the yen for the last couple of years this this carry trade of people chasing this yield um, you would think that this will reverse somewhat without hopefully for the Bank of Japan's point of view an intervention but, um, I think the Aussie dollar is quite undervalued I think as you said we we will hold higher for longer I of that opinion. I think um, our rates aren't as high. The economy's still kicking along. House price still going up. Chinese story probably will recover a little bit. So I'm bullish on the Aussie, bullish on the yen, bearish on the on the US dollar, but um, euro, yeah, on the sidelines. I, don't, I think they've got enough problems that they're not going to get too far ahead um, rates wise in the US. The pound, as you said, it's a, that's that's the that's the widow maker, as we call it in the business. Like a, there's some of the moves that one has, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there. Um, but either way, I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty exciting. We do agree. Um, as a, yeah, I, 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 as a, if you want some excitement in your life, have a look at cable. Uh, sterling US is is certainly one that over basically since the Brexit vote has been one of the hardest to deal with out there. Um, and despite the fact that obviously it is one of the oldest pairs on the planet, it, it is not one that what it once used to be. And there's no doubt that it will get you hard and fast. Um, and yeah, by all means, have a look at it. I still think that if you are looking for day trading moves and what have you, that it's probably a bit more exciting for that reason. But uh, certainly one that I, I don't go near for good reason. 
Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it from, from the broker point of view that um, it's not just cable, it's, it's the pound versus anything. That's been, um, yes, it's been some very big moves. And yes, if you want spicy, you know, selling euro and that will be another level. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to shoot them before um, we end this. Anyone? No? Oh, here we go. Yes, Gene, it is recorded, mate, and we'll be sending the, the link to everyone who's come along. So. Um, if you want to watch again, absolutely, we'll, uh, you'll be able to. Any more questions? All right, well, I might wrap that up. Um, oh, hang on. Two ten year. So, uh, Simona, why not? You can see that question, Ev. I can see that. So. That that question is a good one, uh, and the reason I I didn't go to it. So the expectation, and there's always been this forecast that the U.S. 10-year yields invert, that it forecasts a recession. That is certainly something to be aware of, and I agree with you, Simona. There, the way I would argue that is that if that's going to happen, or if it does happen, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve will clearly have to move on that, uh, and they'll move pretty quickly to un unlock. To, you know the US economy by cutting rates so it's a very good question the thing that's weird about it at the moment Simona is that it's been inverted for a while like significantly longer than normal and it has been and continues to be that post-war thing of always forecasting a US recession it it still could happen don't get me wrong but so far it hasn't and that is slightly weird uh, and I don't, and I didn't want to confuse tonight with that. But the short answer is, if the recession comes, as the two and ten years forecasting, that is more of a reason than not that rate cuts will come and that the US dollar will have to fall off the back of it. I've just got a chart up now, over this the uh, inversion of the US 10-2. You see that um, it's it's a big inversion, and we, when we look back at this is GFC and this is dot com bust and this is the eighty seven crash. It's it's surpassed all of those, so it's it's unusual, you could say, where it is at the moment. Just gonna answer Gene's thing about need a few reviews to understand. Please don't feel um please don't hesitate to reach out as well. So if you want to have a bit more of an in-depth understanding, reach out to Lockie particularly. Um I'm also here to help you out where I can. Um if you want to sort of go through things as he said it is recorded as well so you can sort of review over and over again what i went through i know i went quickly um but there was a, a good reason for that in terms of the fact that there's so much information i don't want to give you what is referred to as analysis paralysis like give you too much stuff that you end up just saying i can't i can't make a decision so that's the other thing to be aware of here is that what i think i'm leaning towards is choose one one pair that you know and understand, choose one fundamental that you can fully get your head around, being aware that there's obviously more inputs than just one, but having a good fundamental base will certainly help you going forward. And, and I think that's the way to answer that point, Gene. Quite a good question from Shane about the US election, Shane. No one knows, I think, oh, this election. Yeah, yeah. It's not a normal so, election. <laughs> not, not just that, that's, that is, that is the fly in the ointment that is whatever cliche you want to use right so next year if you don't remember it is an election it's a presidential election year so november last year it is going to be all bets are off don't forget the republican primaries are happening right now and it is as you'd expect a bit of a an s storm shall we say um trump is still technically ahead um and there is still according to the polls anyway, a, a really decent chance that he could get re-elected. And that would mean all bets are off. Uh, it would be very interesting from a US dollar perspective, from the point of view that we now know what he does, and that is higher level protectionism. That might actually drive you know, investment into the States. Um, 
So take that as you will, but I agree with you. Or we will, I'm sure we will do several seminars on that next year, but all bets are off with as we lead up to that election. Yeah, it could go either way. It's, it's just too hard to, to predict that one. Um, Dean, Bricks Nation Float. Gold's a tough one, mate. It's um, We saw that very big run up last week. It's There's a lot of a lot of resistance in this level up here. And you saw that very sharp turnaround. It's certainly the buying of central banks is, is a big influence, which you might see in the BRICS nation, especially China. But um, to say whether it's going to get 3,000 or not, it's, it's difficult to say. It's had a very big run. I don't know if you've got any opinions on gold, but it feels to me that this level we're at is um, a very difficult one for it to get past. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say about gold. Have you, have you got anything quickly to say, mate? Or oh, okay, Evan's actually left. Um, well, you know what, Dean, we'll do it. We'll do a webinar on gold after I look at a few more of the fundamentals. But one of the things that does drive the gold price is to obviously the strength of the U.S. dollar. So a weaker U.S. dollar can certainly help it, um, and lower yields also. Helps it helps gold strangely enough because it's a it's a cheaper <clears throat> cheaper financing for people to buy gold because it's a non yielding instrument so they don't want to be paying high interest to buy their gold just hoping the gold goes up so low interest rates and low U S dollar certainly bullish for gold um, but you know as we've seen this this level up here is a tough nut to crack for the gold bulls um, we'll see it will need to break through that and 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 hold it. Whereas the other the other day it, it broke through, quickly retraced. So we need a break and a hold to see a leg higher, I think, in gold. All right, guys, I, I'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone, for turning up and coming along. We'll, we'll send the um, the link to the recording. So watch again. Um, some of that stuff on trade view went trading view. Sorry, went through pretty quick, but. If you, it's, everyone can use TradingView. It's free, tradingview.com. You're right, it's, it's a very good platform where you can add those yields and have a real look. And I think if you're trading Forex without an idea of what the yields are doing, you, you're trading with one eye closed, there's no doubt about it. So certainly worth keeping an eye on. Um, and any questions, I've put my email in the chat window to LachlanM at gomarcus.com. Happy to answer those or send them along to Evan. Um, and hopefully we'll see you again for the next special webinar. Um, probably in January, I have to think of a subject yet, but it will be interesting. All right, thanks guys. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>